<laughs> nah, but uh, Kodak Black, man, um, about a year now, you know, he had a rumor out there, and then you came back and dispelled the rumor. How do you feel about his situation now, uh, being locked up? Uh, I don't, I don't feel about it. You know? yeah. I mean, it's fucked up to be locked up for anybody. You know what I mean? I just spoke to my dude Ike on the phone today. He just called me from from indoors. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He passed, and it was his birthday, so it's crazy. So I, don't, I, I don't wish you know locked up on anybody. We think about rap beefs now. It's a little different. Everybody's on the phone. It's it's a whole different vibe than when you guys were in the game and, and shit got serious. What do you think about rap beefs now? And how it is is different. I didn't even talk about nothing happening, guy. I'm glad nothing's out here happening for real. But I'm talking about like the battle days. All right, somebody has beef with somebody, they got at somebody on wax, they got somebody on the record, didn't matter what they said, they went as hard as they had to. You don't think that shit too much anymore. So what do you think about rap now and rap beef? I mean, like I said before, I don't think about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I don't have it. But I mean Rap and beef is two different things. You saying rap beef like a battle, or, or you saying rap beef like rappers beefing? Like you gotta be clarified. I guess you can bring. I guess it's two part question. Battle the battle rap scene now. You don't is really you know what I mean. You don't really see it too much anymore. And then rap beef. That's bullshit. You still see the battle rap scene. You know you just gotta know where to go or go to find it. You know they still. I'm talking about mainstream rap. Fucking huh? I'm not talking about main. I'm not talking about like the underground, the URL rap, the goods and the and the stews That's and things. The only like that. rap battle shit. What else? What else is battle? You mean like, like two uh, uh, stars battling and shit? Yeah, like all right, if somebody got somebody got issues with somebody and they going at it on Twitter, why go at it on Twitter? Why not go at it on no. wax? We like used to see. Why, why not do what? Go at it on wax like we used to see. Because ain't no such thing as wax anymore. Wax is a collectible. People collect them shits. They don't play wax no more. You got sh- sh- people streaming. What are you talking about? I, mean, I know like, what you mean, but you gotta say what you mean. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, you know, so you say you, you, say you, say you got a turntable in your crib? My uncle do. I ain't got no motherfucker turntable. And if it is, it's a lot of that. You got your uncle. You ain't got no nah. Wax, so ain't no wax. I mean, I was just using the term, brother. Just the fucking the record. That's all. <laughs> I ain't trying to bust your balls, but you. That's like saying, "Hey, why you don't got no uh, mixtapes? Ain't no such thing as tapes no more." Like you know what I mean? They got. We got to change the terms mm-hmm. to make them match the, the 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 year and the times that we in. You can't say mixtape because ain't no tapes. You know what I mean? You can't say beef on wax because ain't no wax. We, we got to make the terms match. That's all. Right? Beef, you know, why don't we see beef on strings in 2020? <laughs> <laughs> My nigga, you don't want me, mind me asking. Niggas right? is streaming. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> oh, shit. Now, we, we, we do see beefs. And, you know, uh, yeah, I'm not like, uh, I don't got a list of, uh, this is the beef that happened, da, 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 but and right now, ain't no time for we need to look. Right, right now, we need to be grouping up and right. beef with the right people right now. Fuck all that beef on wax shit. We at war, nigga. This is a revolution right now. Exactly. Speaking of uh, beef. If no longer was beefing right now on wax, they need to slap themselves because there's way more other things to be to be getting crazy about. they be beef with some other dude that look like you. That's fact. Did, did you ever get cool with 50? You and Onyx, yeah, that's kind of something that's never going to be. I never got uncool with nobody. I'm cool with the whole world. I ain't, I ain't no problems with nobody, never. No doubt. Musically, what we got next musically to stick your fingers? Man, you know, I just put out this album. It's called It's About Time. Right right now, I'm on that. You know what I mean? Because it's crazy. And the movie to the album is about to come out on my mobile app in like a couple of weeks. You know what I mean? But I'm actually in the studio tonight working on a new Onyx album. It's called Onyx for Life. Dope. And how, I mean, what's the tour process like with that? Obviously, with COVID 19, it's a little fucked up, but y'all got a, a, a lot. We, 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 was, we were just on tour right when everything kicked off, man. Hmm. They, they killed the whole tour. We did like what, five dates in Canada. We still have five more dates in Canada. And, and then we had a month and a half tour overseas, but they pulled us off tour on when we was in Canada. So, we got a whole bunch of rescheduling shows and da 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 and nobody even knows what's going on on the planet right this second. So, you know what I mean? It's about digital shows right now, I guess, like they're doing the verses. this. We got to figure out the, the, the digital format. Absolutely. Until, until you know, people ain't scared to go outside again. But we outside. Mm-hmm. Um, I was going to say, who is uh, Sticky Fingers listening to? Nowadays, who, who rappers that you rock out with? Little baby, the baby, nobody. Sticky fingers. I mean, I mean, not to be like that, but yeah, yeah. nobody. I mean, listen to, <laughs> yeah, listen to studio recording. Uh, 
I'm more of fucking Netflix the fuck out. Uh, <laughs> I feel you. Person, man. Well, I'm listening to I'm listening to whoever I hear. Lou Baby is do, doing his thing. You know, my dudes are uh, Conway and I'm doing their thing. It's a lot of people out here. You know what I mean? You know, but I be listening to the old joints because I'm I be I be making beats now, so I be sampling. You know what I'm saying? Do you direct? Why, 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 who, who y'all be listening to? I listen to old shit. Yeah, me too. Old shit. Old shit. Old yeah. shit all day long. Oh shit. <laughs> old shit. I got a twelve year old. He listened to the little babies and all that shit, but I can't get into too much of the auto tune. I respect the game now and where it's going. I try to the best of my ability, but I'm just I'm stuck in the nineties and cool with it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Where do you directing? You ever see yourself getting in director's fair? Do you direct movies and things like that? Yo, my dude, y'all better do your research when y'all call me, man. You ain't do I, I, I directed the two movies already for Lionsgate. Well, all, all, both of the movies are all in rap. It started all my apps, Makai Pfeiffer, Bo King Woodbine, Clarence Williams III, yeah, Ray great. J, Trash, Karab, Michael Rappaport, Vivica Fox, Cedric the Entertainer, Malik Yoba, all these people who are, people are directed in my movies. You got you to do your research. You got to check it out. It's called A Day in the Life. Okay. The first one. And the second one is called Caught on Tape. I wrote it, produced it, directed it, starred in it. The whole kit and caboodle. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, no, my fault. I got to look into that. I never even heard of it. Yeah, no doubt. But that's, that's some real shit, though. You know what? It's the illest hip-hop movie ever made, and nobody even knows that. The huh. whole entire movie's a rap, and they got everybody, the mother, and the, I guarantee you've never seen a movie like this before on some hip-hop shit. Check it out. Actually, Absolutely. you know what? There's this website you can watch it on for free, actually. I'm going to tell you, because I don't give a fuck. <laughs> 2BTV.com. T U B I T V.com. A day in the life. Sticky fingers. Oh, man, if you may, man. Um, the legendary, part of the legendary group, Onyx. Um, to talk about uh, Jam Master J, if you may, and, um, you know, what he meant to your life and your thoughts on that. Can you take this back a little bit, if you will? Yeah, I mean, personally, I don't really like talking about Jam Master J. It's so it's, it's that touching. You know what I mean? But what he meant, you know, he meant everything to hip hop to me. You know, he 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 started my career in Onyx. You know what I mean? Like Onyx existed as a group before I was even in Onyx. Like Fred was my cousin. You know, then uh, Big DS and Sun C. But when they were shopping their deal, Jam Master J was like, "Yo, Sticky's in the group, or ain't no group." So you know what I mean? Well, as far as his label was concerned, you know what I mean? Right. Were you you signed to Aftermath at any point? I was supposed to sign the Aftermath. But um, you know, uh, Universal offered me like three hundred thousand dollars more than Jimmy Iovine did. You know, Dr. Dre, he's supposed to give me a million dollars. That's the agreement we had. But then he went back to Jimmy, and Jimmy's like, "Yeah, his last album only went gold, so we only gonna give him five hundred. And I was cool with that. You know, I was like, "All right, fuck it, whatever." Boom. But I was signing my little my little brother, my little brother, God rest the dead, to Universal. I was shopping his deal. Mm-hmm. And uh, they, they say, yo, who, we want to hear some of your joints. I was like, yeah, but I'm shopping X1 shit. He's like, we, we still want to hear it just to hear. So I played it for them. He's like, yo, we want to sign you. We we, we don't want to be in a bid war with Jimmy Iovine, but we, we got 800. So that extra 300, I'm uh, the young kid from Brooklyn, you know what I'm saying, from New York mm-hmm. City, mm-hmm. you know? So I went I went for it, even though Dr. Dre is, is you know, people like one of my top five. Dr. Dre is my favorite producer of all time. So, you know, it was a, uh, should I have? Should I have it? It's like a what if comic book. Too late right. now. How does that work? Um, group deals and single deals. Did you have to negotiate your group deal with Onyx and, and single deal separately? Or, or can you do it at the same time? I'm curious to that. Well, you know, I never wanted to, wanted to do a solo deal, but Fred Rowe and I was like, yeah, fucking do it, do it, do it. So I did it. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, it's a whole no, no negotiation. Actually, I had to fight and get my way out of the Def Jam contract. Because Neil Cohen was like, yo, oh, I'm not in the business of taking overrides. He said, contractually, uh, the numbers that they had to give me per the Onyx agreement for a solo agreement was mad low. I said, yo, they can offer me a mill over here. You can't have to take override. He was like, no. So I had to do some some uh, uh, a lawyer tactic to get out of the agreement. You know what I mean? Right. To be, be able to sign with Aftermath or Universal. You know what I mean? But who knows? If I would have took the deal after that, who knows? I might be dead right now. Yeah. Now, talk about Def Jam, or your time at Def Jam, and uh, I was reading what he said. You guys pretty much saved Def Jam. Could you elaborate on that? Yeah, at the time, right? Def, Def Jam was forty mil in the hole, and that's when they just started their new uh, deal with uh, Columbia, I believe. You know what I'm saying? 
And that's what Onyx, we, we did. Our numbers were doing well at that time, you know, because it was just the uh, the West Coast was running the game at that second. And we came out, we're back the fuck up, and it, it, just, it just killed the charts. So yeah. it got Def Jam out of the hole that they were in. You know what I mean? That's when they signed their new distribution deal, I believe. Right. You think about groups and, and where they fall in greatest of all time. A couple of years ago, you see Migos out here flexing their muscle as the greatest group of all time. And then we had this debate about who is the greatest group. Where does on Onyx fall, in your opinion, when it comes to the greatest groups, rap groups of all time? I mean, I don't want to sound big headed and, um, you know, unhumble, but I think Onyx is the greatest group of all time. Because can nobody fuck with us then or now? You know what I mean? We got the greatest stage show ever. Real talk. And we mm -hmm. learned from the first greatest group of all time, Run DMC, mm -hmm. sure, but they yeah. weren't really a group. They was a duo. But if you count Jay, they was a group. Yeah. So could you talk about um, you was on um, Eminem's album and whatnot, and people at that time and even now were saying that you were one of the first rappers to body Eminem on his own shit. You talk about that. I think it was a Remember Me. Yeah, what about it? Did you did you feel like you body Eminem on his own shit? I feel like I body everybody on anybody's shit. Don't matter. Can't nobody fuck with me. Never, never have, never can. It's, it's a fact. But I got love for him. Yeah. Him, you know, put me on a huge record. Uh, this just sold 16 million copies worldwide. I did it for free. I got a million dollars of publishing with the joint. You know huh. what I mean? And he also did a joint for me called What If I Was White on my album, but he just did the chorus or whatever. So he said, he said, yo, I just did the chorus. I, I still feel like I owe you. Well, I'm coming to collect him. Holler at me. <laughs> how long ago was this? Damn, hey, how long ago did he come, come through with that? Years ago now, right? Yeah, when I put out that album, Black Trash. Yeah, yeah. So, Hey, what hey, listen, ain't no, um, what do you call that? Limited studs, stagitation on collecting on. Okay. That's classic. Now we see who would known now is the rat six, nine before all the pre rat nonsense. He was being compared to Onyx a lot with his style. What did you think about that comparison? I mean, there's a lot of people that could be, be compared to Onyx. If you just go on off with a screaming and woo woo, but Onyx is deeper than that. When Onyx came yeah. out, we changed the whole entire industry. You know what I mean? We, it was, you know, it was the Daisy Age at the time. We came through with that rah rah. Everybody was shaving their heads and and wearing Tims and and fatigue suits and slam dance. We brought slam dance into hip hop, stage diving. No hip hop rapper yeah. ever did that. I did it first. Like you know what I'm saying, we changed the game. So, you know, you you got to compare to that. We revolutionaries. You know what I mean? What the fuck made you stage dive anyway? What made you go through your ass? So you know, I'm jumping off this motherfucker today. Because I want to get closer to the crowd. That's dope. You know, you climb speakers so the people all the way in the back can see you. And that you energy. jump on their head so the people in the front can feel you. Word. No doubt. Um, in Too Deep in Tupac. Um, your relationship with Pac. Ain't you remember from that? I had a relationship with Pac. I met Pac one time. That was okay. at Rodney Dangerfield Club. He, he walked up and he said, stick, what up, yo? I love, love you, yeah, nigga. Dad. Oh, what up, my nigga? Dad, bang. He said, you only buy you a drink. So we went and got, got some Hennessy. You know what I mean? The rest is history. What would you say was better for you, your your acting career or your music career right now? What was more, um, what did you enjoy more? <laughs> Both. That's like saying, you know, <laughs> what, what you like better, the Ferrari or the Lambo? Both. You, you, you Word. Get fast the motherfucker, you know? I can dig it. Yeah, that's, that's why I put out my movie, um, A Day in the Life. The whole entire movie is in rap. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Cause I couldn't choose which what, one, movies or music, so I, so I did a musical movie. You know what I mean? With everybody and their mother in the movie, and the whole entire movie is in rap. No reg, no uh, regular parts whatsoever. Or anything in the future now that you um are still? I mean, obviously still doing music, but any movies in the future? Yeah, I got the I got the movie of my life coming out. It's a short movie. Okay. Um, it's, it's called It's About Time. It's gonna be on my new mobile app. The mobile app should be out in like two weeks or so. Okay. It's done. It's just waiting for the approval process through uh through the Apple store right now. 